Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM24 Yeti, episode 39. It's 1st of September now, but I would suspect that within about three to five minutes of time here, we should be to the 1st of January. So we're going to be wrapping this season up extremely quick. We've already done our signing special in the last episode. There has been no further development. Our, our top three is the same top three here a month later. But here are a couple of things that have happened. One, our success level has risen. Uh, how we perform at the pro level. Tour of Denmark, a, a race that we've had wins in in the past, but it had been hard to come by. I've worked really hard to get those victories. Uh, they've led to some of the snowballing that we've had. Well, quick simming. <laughs> And the quality of our guys on paper is clearly getting better and better. Hagland, with his level up, with his better stamina, his better resistance, his better hills rating, has been even more successful. He won a stage and won the Tour of Denmark. But wait, no, it was not a double. It was a triple win for us as a team. As Zhu, who's also leveled up as a sprinter and has better flat rating and better stamina, clearly the benefits of that improved quality is starting to show as he also won a stage. Our team index is slowly falling. It's down to 29th. We were as high as 22nd on August the 1st, but a lot of the movement, a lot of the activity surrounding the five and four and a half star guys, the ones that are in our competitive range, is happening right now. It's been happening over the last week or so and will continue to happen over the next week or so. So by the time we get to the 1st of October, it should be pretty clear on whether we're going to make it or not. The bubble is 35th at 29th. We're just below the midway point of Continental Pro, which is right about where I expected us to be. There is still a chance that we can move a little further down though. Back over into the dossiers page, which I already teased. There are two five-star riders remaining, just two. And then the four-and-a-half-star list ends, ends at Fredheim. That is a very short list at this point. There are literally just nine riders left who could alter the fate of any of those teams vying to get into Continental Pro. At minimum, you have to have one of these. <laughs> at minimum. We have two of them. And right now that seems to be enough. So there's still a chance for us to drop as many as about nine places. After these guys are gone, I doubt we're going to see any issue. In theory, with as many teams as there are and what's out there and where the money would go, I would suspect that we'll drop to maybe 31st or 32nd, or maybe just 30th by the time this is done. I doubt we're going to stay put, but I doubt we're going to drop very far. So we've reached the end of the season. We've made it. Dropped to 32nd, but we are three spots above the bubble. We'll come back to that ranking here in just a second because it did change. Uh, as for scouting the under-18s, this was literally the best signable prospect that we came across. Remember, we've got that whole snowball thing. There's a lot of nations. The better nations, we just don't have access to it. So it's really hard to find the diamond in the rough when the rough is, you know, pretty bad but at three spots above the bubble we increased our star rating and it made absolutely no difference we were 32nd we improved our star rating and we stayed 32nd we just opened the gap behind us a little bit where like last season three star solid is what it took to get in three and a fraction actually you have a hint of like a point one maybe on these last two teams that didn't make it. Last year, we were just a fraction under a full third star, were we not? That's all the way down around like 49th this season, where last season that was about 42nd. So things are definitely going up. Burgos, do not make Continental Pro with an exact three star rating. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a higher threshold, but barely. But there's a, there seems to be a pretty healthy gap between that just under three stars to just above. And we're definitely on our way towards the three and a quarter, three and a half range and being a bit more comfortable in Continental Pro. I think staying in Continental Pro shouldn't be too difficult from this point on. But at this stage, we're going to have to guarantee three, four and a half star riders on the team 
all the time. So I'll have to keep an eye on expiring contracts and make sure that we're re-signing those and eventually growing into, you know, five star and beyond uh, to eventually make a push towards world tour. The reason for our push to a little bit better is Haglund has been replaced as our third best rider by Aiden Shaw, who just, just made it to the four and a half star uh, realm here. And now we have two guys of a very similar model in Zhu and, uh, and Shaw that are not complete sprinters, but have pretty good top speed. A little more well-rounded for Aiden Shaw, but not by much. He now has a 76 sprint, 76 acceleration, 70 recovery, and 69 stamina resistance and a 71 flat. He's definitely better in everything except for top speed compared to Shu. He's also a little bit better climber. Instead of a 55, he's got a 60 in, in his mountain rating. And he's definitely got plenty more to give us. But he is a weak climber. He is a pure sprinter only. And he's one of those dime a dozen kind of sprinters, at least for the higher levels that just does not have enough pace. He has one career victory at this point. For us, he's a big time signing because he does have that five and a half star potential, but I mean, really, does he? Like he's gonna be a good top speed kind of guy. He's definitely got more room there. He might hit an 80-80, but he's going to only get wins on the perfect profile for him. Like Zhu has been a bit problematic for us now that he's a little more well-rounded. He's doing a lot more in those Continental Pro races. But going forward, it's going to start taking World Tour victories, not Continental Pro victories. Aiden Shaw is going to be fine for those. He's going to start securing those Continental Pro level victories, and we are headed for that Continental Pro. But we're going to barely, barely touch grass when it comes to the World Tour next season. I'll explain that in a little bit. We'll check one last thing before... Uh, sorry, two last things and then we'll head to January 1st. So the first thing we're gonna check here is we're saying goodbye to two riders. It's Mokaki Mokaki and Stanley Sophia. The one that confused people with the fem feminine last name uh, because of his web decreasing. He is nowhere near the rider he had the potential to become, which is really disappointing for him. Mokaki Mokaki went through a similar decrease. I think Mokaki was a four star potential initially, decreased to three and a half star. The web didn't disintegrate, but it got a lot lower. And unlike some of the other writers, Mokaki started, I think, as like a one and a half star. He, he was a first year signing. We've had him on the team for quite a while, but you've barely seen him because he's never been in the higher races. Uh, bar once or twice he he does well in his home nation he's got a 1-1 nation for them he's good he's got six victories but that's three years of this three years of double national championships with no one competing against him that's his six career victories uh, well-rounded in the sense that he's got a 60 plus in everything and where we started the playthrough He's good for that first year. The second year, he's got competitive numbers. The 68 Hills was amongst the best riders we would have had in that second year. And he was a three-year deal with potential. But somewhere around year, I think it was year two of that three-year deal, he saw that decrease like Stanley did. And it's just really nerfed him. And he had such a long ways to go because he started so low and then had decent potential. And then that got nerfed at the beginning of year number two that he's never become. Last thing we're going to check is the rankings. It's Jumbo Visma, Vingegaard claiming just slightly more than Van Aert. Uh, Koos about half as many. Uche Brooks and Ironsman, the other top riders for Visma. And UAE was McNulty leading the way. Pagacar only third. You would assume he must have spent some time injured this year for that to happen. Uh, Hershey and Almeida, the others with Del Toro. Uh, Lytle Trek ended up third. That's a surprise place for them to be. Mads Pedersen, Milan, uh, leading the way for them. Groupama, led by Jorgensen and Gregoire and Godou. Uh, Bora Hansgrohe just behind them with Danny Martinez. Roglic, only getting 2,000 points now. He's well into his 30s. 
So it all quick step Ineos, EF, Lotto Destiny, and Bahrain Victorious round out the top 10. All World Tour teams in the top 10. Starting with 11th, the next five are all World Tour teams. Uno X, a World Tour team. The first Continental Pro team is Arkea. Intermarche is the second one. And Kofidis, that's going to be a tough nut to crack as you're looking at a really, really strong 20 plus teams. Total Energies, Decathlon AG2R, Tudor, Equipo, Kern Pharma are your top 24. 25 is Caja Rual. So, what our goal is going to be as we are the top continental ranked team in the world, we end up finishing the year with 3,400 points. Hagland, by the end of the year, was our top scorer. He did nothing in the first months of the season. He really just came on around May or June and ended up being our top scorer. Shoo. Mr. Top Speed. Most of his points also came pretty late in the year after, after he had that level up and added some flat and stamina points. So both of those guys went on to do pretty well at a higher level, at pro level races, uh, Denmark in particular, where they scored a lot of points for us, uh, giving us some successes we weren't getting otherwise. Pickroll, Ponomar, Zipinati, the other top scorers for our team this season. We finished the year ranked 28th. The goal for next season Obviously, we want to start performing at World Tour level so that we can snowball. However, you have to have access to World Tour races, and our sponsor is probably going to only give us two to three races at the World Tour level, and we will not gain entry for any more. I could request for every single one of the races. We'll be lucky to get one. We probably won't get that. So with three races, the opportunities to snowball are next to none. What we need is a guarantee that we can get what World Tour races we want. Or at least, it's not a guarantee, it's a promise. right? Guarantee is definitely going to happen, a promise to the top two teams and sort of the third team in the rankings at the end of the year, as in right here, right now. So, Arkea, B&B, and Intermarche Wanti, and then Kofidis are going to have access to World Tour races. Whichever ones they request invites to, they're going to get the huge majority of those, like 95%. Additional Continental teams will get into races, but it's going to happen through invites, so Total Energies is not going to be that cheap. Now, this also includes, though, that team index and who is the World Tour teams, who is the Continental Pro teams, and this is going to be important for us as... The Continental Pro teams for the coming season include Israel, Premier Tech, Hagens Berman, Intermarche, Arkea, so they're staying put, so we know those two. The third one was not Terenganu, right? Uh, so they're, it's going to be hard. We're going to have to crack the top three of the rankings in Continental Pro. I'm going to have a much busier season of doing races that aren't important, but score points. And we are going to have to score lots and lots and lots of points. The best way to do that is not through winning a race. Though that does help you secure points. The best way to do that is flooding the top 10 with four or five of your riders. And then hopefully winning it with one of them. But getting third place, sixth place, eighth place, and tenth place in a race will secure way more points than first and the next best rider on your team is 28th. Gaming the system, getting lots of guys placed very high in the rankings, stage after stage, race after race, will accumulate the most points and give us an opportunity to secure a top position, which will take a nobody, such as us, and turn us into a guarantee for the World Tour races the following year. And once you have that guarantee for World Tour races, two things are going to happen. One, you're competing in World Tour races where there's more points available. Maintaining a top three position becomes easy. So you can do it at game, uh, uh, season after season. You can maintain what you've achieved. Then the second thing is lots of World Tour races means, well, exactly what we need. Snowball. Instead of having a few opportunities the entire year to build the snowball, 
you now have unlimited opportunities to build on the snowball and then you get into that last phase of the game where you get the better nations and you sign the best riders and we go out and dominate and get into world tour and dominate world tour i know i'm on the short side for this episode but we did manage to cover three months and in my sitting my recording of three episodes it's been a long day to be able to go from where were we may all the way to january of the next season in one sitting it's it's been some work anyway here's the outcome on the sponsors so they have gotten us into one race in the first three months of the year they've asked to get into three more and i can tell you from experience we will not get into any of those especially santos tour down under they never take any teams for that one it's always barren we have one in the second portion of the season so two classics nothing in the third portion and nothing in the fourth period of the season another request for polonia that's that's it we have two one day classics at world tour level so the real objective for the season is not going to be focused on those two races though believe me i will focus on those two races and hopefully we can get one win out of those but i i don't like our odds i really don't like our odds of getting a win in either of those uh, i think it's going to take more than two races to get a win i don't think we're going to win 50 percent of our world tour races this year therefore the real priority for the season as stated a little bit ago is going to be to amass as many points as possible and that's going to come down to the pro category we are going to have to we're going to have to put bids in for pretty much all of the pro races uh, across the year and as we already saw at the end of last season even through Quicksim, we were starting to have success in these departments. With a full slate, our team's going to be quite busy. With a full slate, our team's going to be quite busy. And going through these races one by one, I'm going to have to Quicksim some of them. I cannot just sit down and race all of them. But I am going to have to race a fair few of these races to amass points. And it's going to be really hard to qualify in the top couple of positions without a slate of world tour races the world tour races are worth so much more and the continental races you can win them all day long and still finish nowhere near the top because the gap in the series in the valuation of the points is significant we had a good season we got a lot of results this last year and we were still the equivalent of what was it about ninth or tenth comparative to the continental pro teams to bump that up is going to take an effort and so the focus for the next quite a few episodes is going to be going through these races and getting the most we can out of them but what we have going for us that we did not have a year ago we started last year with three four-star guys we have three four-star guys right now some of them are the same ones two of them are the same among the three that we had last season. Now we have three four and a half star guys and we had zero until right at the end of the season when Zhu leveled up and two new signings. We have three three and a half star guys and that's about where we were at the start of last season. We had quite a few guys that were two and a half stars or below. We are down to just a single one now. So the whole team has leveled up kind of across the board by about a half star and we're going to be racing in the same races that we raced in at the top end last season we had a lot more pro races than we did in previous years but it was still a rather small amount now we should be able to get into any pro race that we would like to get into without problem as we are a conti pro team that's going to set us up uh, the last thing we're going to look at here before we get in is we've got a lot of expiring contracts this year. Uh, we have nine of them, so we're going to have some decisions to make. But guys like Giotti and Wang and Altingarol, uh, Chang, who are just three and a half star prospects, are just three and a half star prospects. And we have a lot 
better options now that were available. These guys were all signed to two or three year deals originally. We didn't do any one year deals uh, last year. So all of the ex expiring contracts are guys that have been around on the team for a while, but a lot of them are still domestiques. Now amongst, among this group, you've still got Shui and Hallinan and Lubers. And, you know, we signed a lot of the best options available to us. But for the two or three years ago, the best options available to us then, well, the pool's grown a lot since then. It did not grow last year. We added two nations, Lithuania and Estonia, and Mikkels. Mattis Mikkels is great. Five-star guy. He was on a multi-year deal. He'll be available this year. He might be our top prospect that we go after, but he may not be interested in signing uh, with our team as a five-star guy. He might not want to get down to Continental Pro, but that certainly would help us uh, build and affirm our Continental Pro position that we now have uh, as we're not far above the bubble. But I would imagine that Shaw or you know Montez or Hagland uh, through development will help us get that little bit higher, get that little bit more, get that five-star guy that just makes us comfortable for Continental Pro. Probably still outside World Tour, though, I mean, we saw from the list, there was only one team with a five-star rider on it in Continental Pro last season. Very well might not be the case this season. It could be bigger, it could be better, it could be stronger. Our two big contracts, though, neither is expiring. And so what we have in terms of expiration is minimum contracts and two guys at 3K. So we're not freeing up a ton of money, and I don't think we'll necessarily re-sign eight riders or sign eight riders in the place of them. We might drop back down, sign about six from them. I think there's at least three guys in that group that we would like to retain, and it would make sense that within the pool, we're only looking at three or four of the best options that are out there because we already have the vast majority. Now, if we could find an 18, 19, or 20-year-old that has an amazing profile and potential, well, then that's an easy choice. But in terms of that top-tier talent, we've already gotten after most of it. And your Langalatis or something like that were guys that we passed on by choice because they're already mid-30s and there was better options available. But it'll well, time will tell what the best options are this year. So three focuses for the year two opportunities and two only for snowballing but accumulate a crap ton of points it's going to be the main goal of the year and then uh, reshape the squad a little bit for next season because we do have a fair few expiring contracts and Ju is among those with an expiring contract so we do have one top tier rider just one Everybody else is three stars or below currently, uh, but with just one top tier rider, he'll easily be on our list of we need to re-sign him. He's going to cost us more than 3000 it costs now, but he's, as he's already on the team and as we've moved from Continental to Continental Pro, I'm hoping that we can get him to that 100% evaluation, get him signed on, and actually I think in general, now that we have made Continental Pro, signings of four and a half stars or lower are going to be a lot easier to make because they're joining a, a higher tier team. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.